I recently came across this animated bottom tray from the family app on Emil's blog. Definitely check out Emil's work in the description. Today we're going to recreate it using frame or motion. You can grab the starter code in the description and with that, let's jump in. I have the starter code pulled up. I just took the Next.js starter code, ripped out all the boilerplate and added the shad CN button, which doesn't do anything. Let's start by having the tray show up when we click this button. So I'm going to go into the components folder and make a new component called tray. And I'm going to add some very simple styles right now. So here on this div, give it a position absolute bottom four inset X of zero MX auto, a width of 22 rem minimum height of 10 uh, BG of neutral 50. Give it some horizontal and vertical padding and overflow of hidden. And I'm also going to give this a border radius as well. Let's say rounded XL. Okay, let's go ahead and add this onto the main page. So here, let's just say below this button for now, let's just pull in this tray component, go ahead and hit save, and we see the trays here at the very bottom. So now let's have this tray only show up when we click this button. So here on the home page, I'm gonna create a state variable for tray open. So this will be telling us whether the tray should be open or not. So initially it will be set to false. Now let's import use state. Then I'll do some conditional rendering on this tray. So I'll say, if tray open is true, then let's render this tray. So now that this appears, and now on this button component, let's just add an on click and we'll simply set the tray open to be true. Now I click the button, tray shows up, but let's make this tray show up a little bit more nicer with some animations. So I'm gonna go back here. And I'm just gonna change this actually back again to the darker color so we can see this for now. And we're going to use frame motion to animate this tray in. So first thing is I'll convert this to be a motion div. Then as additional properties here, I'll give it a initial value of Y336, an animate of Y of zero. And let's also give it an exit of let's say Y500. I'm also going to add a transition property. Duration should be 0.2. And let's set the ease to be ease in. Okay, so let's try this again. So refresh the page, hit open tray, and there we go. It does animate in. Now, in order to make sure this exit animation works, we need to go back here and make sure that we wrap this tray component in an animate presence tag. So let me just do that here. Okay, now we have that configured, but we don't have a way right now to close this tray. And so one way we're gonna do that is we're gonna add a background overlay that darkens the content. And also if we click on it, it will hide the tray. So here in the tray component, I'm actually going to make this a React fragment because we're going to want to return another div above here. And let's just make this a motion div up front because we're going to want to animate this. Give it a class name of absolute inset zero BG black and let's give it a opacity of 20. Okay, so that's already looking pretty nice. Let's give it some animation properties as well. So we'll give it initial of let's just say opacity zero and let's just have it, have this essentially fade in. So animate will be opacity one and exit will be past the zero. Okay, so if I refresh, hit open tray, background animates in. Now let's set up the on click here, but we need a way to access the state variable from the page. So we're gonna pass that down as props. So in the tray component, let's set up the property definitions. So we'll set up an interface, tray props, and it will just take a function close tray, which won't return anything, and then for this component, we'll just add this in the constructor, a close tray property, and this props, we have type tray props. And now we just need to pass that in to the tray component. So we'll say close tray will be set tray open to false. And now on the tray component, we can add an on click to the overlay, and we can simply just pass in close tray. So now let me just refresh this open tray, it animates in. If I click anywhere on this overlay, there we go, everything animates out. And now that we have this overlay set up as well, let's change this background of the tray again, because I think now we'll be able to see it. Okay, now that we have this basic functionality set up, let's go ahead and add some content to this tray to make it look a little bit more interesting. Now to save some time, I've gone ahead and already created a few different pages for the tray in this tray content folder. So you can see here, there's a, you can see like an options menu, there's a page for private key, recovery phrase, and remove wallet. 
There's nothing really super crazy here. Honestly, it's just a lot of HTML, CSS, a lot of Flexbox. Now, what I'm going to do to bring this in is I'm going to create a dictionary that stores all these components and attach them with a tag. So here, let's define this dictionary. So I'm going to call this tray content, and this will be of type record, and it'll be a string to a React node here, an actual component. Let me just import React node. So the first one will say, for example, be options, and this will be tagged to the options menu component. We do need to pass in a couple of properties here. One is called set content, which we'll pass in shortly. And then we also will pass in close tray, which will be what we already have set up. Now I'm going to make three more copies of these. This one will be for private key. This will be for recovery. This will be for remove. I'll swap these for the relevant components. So private key, recovery phrase, and remove wallet. Now we need to set up the set content, which we'll get to in a second. But now that we have this dictionary, we can store which of these is currently active and which one we want to show. So let's put that in a state variable. So we'll call it content set content equals use state. And let's say initially we want to show the options. Let's import use state. And now for set content, I can just pass in the set content from this state variable. Now this is all set up. Now let's go ahead and actually render this selected content. So I'm going to replace this tray text here with another div. And inside this div, I'll just say tray content and the index of content, which is the active content. Hit save. And there we go. We have some content showing up here. I'm just going to add a little bit of top padding here for now. We'll get around to fixing that in a better way in a little bit, but let's just say padding top of three for now. Okay, so that's not looking a little bit better. And the way this is configured is each of these buttons takes advantage of this set content to switch the pages. So for example, I can click here and say view private key. There we go. It goes to this page. You can cancel, go back. Recovery phrase is there and the root wallet is also there. And we have these X buttons at the top, which utilize this closed tray function that we pass in. So I can click close tray nicely gets the X animations going as well. Now, one thing you'll notice is as I switch between these different pages, it's pretty jarring. It's not the most delightful switching in this card. So let's go ahead and use layout animations from Frame Motion to make this look a lot better. So all we need to do is we need to go into the surrounding div that surrounds this tray. And I'm just gonna add the layout property here. Hit save. And now if I switch pages, nothing's really happening. And that's because we also need to convert this div below to be a motion div as well. And on top of that, we also need to give it a key because this will be how Fair Motion tracks when the content here has changed. I refresh the page, click these buttons, and there we go. We have now a very interesting animation, but now it is animating between each of the different pages. Now to make this look a little bit less weird, on this internal div, I'm gonna pass in layout property equal to position. So now if we try this again, okay, this is starting to look a lot better already. So it's not doing weird scaling. And I'm also going to just do a gentle fade in as well for these pages. So it looks a little bit more smooth. So on this, I'll say initial of opacity zero and animate opacity of one. So now as you switch pages, this is looking much better. Now, the other thing you might notice is these corners. If you watch closely the, the shape of them, they do a little bit of morphing, and this is because border radii don't work well with layout animations. So to fix this, instead of doing a rounded Excel here, I'm instead just going to directly pass this in to a style tag. So I'll say style, let's say border radius, and let's say value 28. So now when I switch, no more morphing. We are almost done here, but as a final touch, I want to make this trait draggable as well. So I can drag down to close it. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a visual drag indicator that we can grab onto for dragging. So I'm going to go here above this internal motion div. I'm going to add a button and this button, I'll give it class names of margin vertical of three margin X of auto flex and justify center. And you can see it adds some vertical spacing. And let me just also delete the padding top here that we had earlier. And then inside this button, I'm going to create the actual pill shape I want for this drag indicator. So this will be a div and give it styles of height two, width 14, cursor grab, touch none, 
BG Gray 200. And when active, I'll give it a cursor of grabbing. Okay, so we have this where you also need to make this rounded in a second, but you can see I have this hand indicator. If I click on it, it has this nice change of cursor. Now, before we go forward, what I want to do is try these layout animations again, because we'll notice this also starts to have some weird morphing that happens as a switch between pages. So to fix this, I'm going to make this a motion div. I'm also going to add a layout property to this div. And what this will tell frame motion is in layout animations, like leave this alone essentially. So when I click on it, okay, it's still being a little bit weird and funky. So the other thing I'm going to do, so I'm going to give this a key of drag bar. And now when I switch, okay, now it's behaving much better. And because we need to make this a motion div and it's going to have layout animations, I saved the border radius styling for a style tag like four. So border radius, let's just say is a hundred. So now we get that pull shape, but let's actually make this do some dragging. Now with frame of motion, doing dragging is actually really easy. So let me go onto the component that we want to drag, which is this motion div that defines this card and below this layout, I'm just going to say drag. And I'll say, I want just to drag on the Y axis. Now let's just try it. I'm going to click anywhere and look at that. I can drag it however I want, but this is obviously not exactly the dragging that we want. So let's go ahead and add some constraints and elasticity configurations. So I'll add drag constraints and I'll say I want top zero and bottom zero. And let me add an extra pair of curly braces. So now you'll see when I drag, if I refresh the page, and open this, when I drag it, you can see it's now stuck. It's stuck in its current position. So I can't drag it up or down, but it has still nice, this nice elasticity. But I can configure this elasticity even further, drag elastic. And let's say when I move it up, I don't want any elasticity. But when I move it down, I still want some elasticity. So now if I try again, I can't drag it anymore up at all. But when I drag it down, it still has this nice spring effect. Okay, so now we want this drag to actually close this card altogether. So for that, we need to directly override the drag listening and drag controls of this card. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna set drag listener to be false. This completely disables this card from being dragged from me just clicking anywhere. So this allows us to target the drag and just to be on this indicator. Now to actually get those drag controls back, we need to create a controls object up here. So say const controls equals use drag controls, which is a hook from frame motion. And while we're up here, I'm also going to create a way for us to track how much dragging has happened. So I'll make a variable here called drag y, and I'll set this to be a use motion value and initially just a value zero. Okay, so now coming back to this div, underneath this drag listener is false. Let's add drag controls back and I'll set this to be the controls object we just created. And to make this drag actually work in the style tag, I'm going to set the Y position to be a value drag Y. Okay, so this still doesn't really work. And that's because we need to actually turn on the drag controls. So for this, we're going to attach this to the button that we just made for this drag indicator. So on this motion div below this layout, I'm going to take advantage of the on pointer down event. And we'll say, take the event and we'll say controls, the drag controls start E. If I refresh the page, hold this indicator. Look at that. We get the drag controls back. But now if I click anywhere else, the drag controls no longer work. It's only when we click this indicator. Now, the final thing we want to do is we want to close this card if we drag down by a certain amount, let's say 100 pixels. So for that, we can go back to this motion that where we set up all this dragging. And here I can say on drag end. And we can say if drag y dot get so the current value of the drag is, let's say greater than or equal to 100 pixels then I'll just call close straight. So now if we go back here, if I drag it down a little bit, bounces back. If I drag it down more than 100 pixels, there we go. We close the whole tray. So that's what we got for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. And on screen now is another video for you to check out, and I'll see you in the next video.